Hey, it's Joel. Don't you hate it when you don't have a spot to put your scooter? Man, I don't have a spot to put my scooter. What if I could show you how to create your own custom scooter stand? Man, I could really use a custom scooter stand. I'm gonna do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. What kind of dance is that? It's this dance. Okay, that's a good dance. David and his sisters have these really awesome scooters, and it'd be much better if they could stand up on their own. So in today's video, we're gonna show you how to create your own custom scooter stand and then 3D print it yourself. Doesn't that sound cool? Yeah, that sounds really fun and cool and awesome. One of the things I do have to tell you is this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And I think this is awesome because Skillshare is a video-based learning site that gives you hundreds if not thousands of different classes and all sorts of different topics. One of those topics is trick skateboard riding. Awesome! You know what another topic is? What? Sports photography. Cool! You watch a lot of videos and you learn from videos, right? Yeah. Well, lots of people learn better by watching videos and that's exactly what Skillshare provides. And in fact, David, for the first 500 people that click the link in the description, they will get their first two months of Skillshare Premium absolutely free. 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 So big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video where I'm hopefully gonna teach you how to make something pretty cool. But before I teach you how to make something pretty cool, I'm gonna show you something you could just download off the internet. The one that I downloaded off the internet is this one right here. This is by Thingiverse user Aaron J. 314, or as I like to say, Aaron J. Pi. The number. Pi. It's, it's a good, it's a hashtag dad joke. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. This is a scooter stand that you can download off of Thingiverse and print. And it's, it's, it's kind of cool. It has these little winglets that stick out the side to provide stability. And then it has these towers that stick up in this dip right there mm -hmm. in the middle. And the idea is that it doesn't use the wheel to balance it. The forks rest on these spots. Should we try it out? Yeah. Okay. Give it a try. How do you like it? It works pretty well. It works pretty well. So just for something that you can download off the internet and print yourself, that's not bad, right? Yeah. But what if you wanted it custom? Because here's my idea. Since David has two sisters and they both have scooters themselves, printing three of these could be troublesome. What I want is the ability to have the scooters parked in a row. You know how like bikes have parking that you just pull them up and park them in? Yeah. What if we could do the same for scooters? That'd be cool. So David, I think it's time for me to go design one. Before I go do that though, we need to take some measurements. The wheel is 110 millimeters in diameter mm -hmm. and it's 25 millimeters wide. Yeah. I'm gonna go take those and plug them into the computer and come back with something awesome. Okay. Be right back. Now that we have our dimensions in the book and our measurements, we can easily recreate the wheel, the little brackets, and the scooter stand that we want to create. So let's go to Fusion 360 by clicking this button. There we go. There's Fusion. First, let's start a sketch. We're gonna put it on this plane right here. And remember, me and Fusion, we, we do things our own way. You do things your own way. There's probably a correct way. And I probably don't things don't do things always the correct way, but I have a general idea of what I'm doing and it seems to work out, so I hope this helps. On our sketch, hit C for a center base circle. I'm gonna bring it out from origin and I'm gonna bring it out 110 millimeters. Enter, enter, there it is. I'm now gonna bring out another one and it's gonna be 22 millimeters because that's generally the size of the bearing. We don't need it exact for this, but generally that's it. I'm gonna click here and hit E for extrude and we need to make the wheel 25 millimeters deep. Rather than one side, we can go symmetric and we can click this for whole length because when we type 25, it does it for us. It brings it out evenly on either side of the plane. This is a new body, I'm gonna hit okay. One last step to make it really look like a, a wheel. Click here, hold down shift and click here, hit F for fillet and just drag this arrow slowly until they meet. If you go too far, it looks like that. You don't want that. They meet and that's it. Hit okay. You now have a wheel, but we're not done. 
not by a long shot. So, well, we want to add in the brackets. So let's edit this sketch. First, I'm gonna bring out two more circles, one that's 30 millimeters and one that's 15 millimeters. You'll see why. L for line, bring this one straight up, just like that. Now bring one straight over this way. Now hit escape. Now I want you to hit L again, connect to this line and bring it down and your angle right there. Make it, make it generally 78 degrees. That should be an easy one. Hit escape. And now this is kind of cool. Click this line, hold down shift and click this circle and hit the tangent button. It brings it right over. Now hit T for trim and you can trim off this end, this end and this end and stop the sketch. And now look, we have the ability to, let's see, let me turn off this body. So now we have this ability to extract the bracket or extrude the bracket, I'm sorry. And the reason we made this inner circle is because that's where the, the bolt goes. It's not required that we do that, but I mean, it was easy enough to do. I'm gonna hit E for extrude and I'm gonna type in three, three millimeters. It looks pretty good. But if we turn on this wheel here, that's not a good sign because that's not where we're, we don't want it to be a cut. We want it to be a new body and we need it to be away from the wheel. So let's do an offset plane. And the offset, well, we know that the wheel is a certain size. And so we'll put in the size divided by two because it's only half on that side. So now it's right up against the wheel. Let's put this in parentheses and then let's do a plus one. So what it does is it brings it out halfway and then adds one to it. That looks pretty good. Let's hit okay. One more thing. Let's go create and mirror. Pattern type, we want to mirror bodies. We're going to click this body right here. The mirror plane, that's this one right here. Clicking on that, hitting OK, it gives it to us on this side. In fact, let's turn off the sketch. That looks pretty good. And really now we've just, we've just catted up a simple wheel and the brackets on either side. So now what we need to do is make our proposed scooter stand. And I have an idea for that. Let's turn off the bodies. Let's turn on the sketch and then let's edit the sketch. What I want to do is bring a shape that kind of goes along here and down and up here and down. It should be pretty simple. So let's just design it and hit L for line. I'm going to start here. I'm gonna bring it down. Let's see, I want it to be, ah, there we go. I want it to be a right angle, 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna bring this one over here, about like that. And then let's just bring this down here. I'm gonna hit escape because I wanna hit L for line and do it over here. So we'll bring that maybe roughly here and then down looking like that. So last I hit escape, I'm gonna hit L for line again. And there's probably easier ways to do this, but I'm just going to bring a line straight across hit escape, and then we're gonna do that cool tangent thing. So click here, click here, say it's a tangent. Now hit T for trim, and click here, here, just to clean it up. That's probably not required. Now stop sketch. So there it is. So we have this shape, and what we need to do is bring this shape out. So let's, uh, let's turn off the bodies. Click here, here, and here. I'm gonna hit E for extrude and I'm gonna turn the bodies back on because what I wanna do, I wanna bring this out say 20 millimeters. But again, it's not a cut. It's gonna be a new body and it's gonna be on both sides, but we'll do one side at a time. So we'll go an offset plane and we know that it's going to be up against the wheel as well. So let's do 25 divided by two and then let's do plus two um plus one how about let's do plus one plus two maybe plus one is too close now nah, we'll do plus one hit okay there we go and i think you know what's next we're gonna go create and mirror we want to mirror bodies this is the body the mirror plane is right there i'm gonna click it hit okay and there we go we have these on either side but we need, to, we need to connect them in the middle somehow. We want the, the wheel to rest on something. And I have an idea for that. So let's edit this sketch. Let's, let's click this circle. And I'm, let's see, let's hit O for offset. 
and I'm gonna type in two for the offset value. Because I don't, we don't want it to be perfectly rested up against the tire. We want a little bit of give. And then I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna click here. But we don't want this whole thing because that's, that's too big. So let's click away, hit L for line. And let's bring this all the way across. Now hit escape. So now let's click here. Let's click here. Oh wait, let's stop the sketch. Okay, remember we have to do that. So now what we wanna do, let's see, let's turn off the bodies. Let's click this one and this one. Let's turn them back on. Hit E for extrude. Then let's bring it back here until they intersect. It's not a cut, it's gonna be a join. And then one side, it's going to be symmetric. And then hit okay. So cool, we've got this little kinda case. So let's turn off the wheel and the two brackets. And let's turn off the sketch. And there we have this little shape. That's pretty cool right there. So let's save it out as an STL and let's test it. Oh, David, sorry it took me so long, but look what I've got. This is just a test one right here. Oh, okay. This is just a test one to verify our measurements are okay. So what do you say? Okay, let's try it. I also have a compliment about that. What? It kind of looks like a speedboat. Sure. Oh, now Ooh. remember, because this one is going to be built to have some in a row, we're going to attach them to a board or something. So then I'm gonna hold it down to see if it supports the okay. scooter. Go ahead and let go. That seems to support the scooter pretty well. Yeah. It looks like it leans a bit. Yeah. Okay. If it only leans just a little bit, not a big amount. Well, what I can do is change the clearance in here so that it doesn't lean as much. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll add some holes for screws. Because okay. Because we want to attach it to a board, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, David, looks like I got to go back to the computer. You going to be okay down here? Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Our shape was good. Uh, it wasn't as good as it could be. So I think what we need to do is remove some of the plastic and we need to bring in the clearance just a little bit. I don't think it should be a problem. Let's go to Fusion 360. I've taken this shape. Let me show you the shape that I made. So this is the shape before and this is the shape after. So what I've done is added in some curves. I've removed some of the plastic pieces. I've added some fillets. And what I've done is added the screw holes. You know, when it's sitting on the board, there's gonna be multiple ones and we need a way to attach it down. And so the best way to do that would be some screws into the wood. And the fillets make it look nice. And these, these curves make it look kind of space age. I don't know. So if I go in here and I turn on the wheel and the brackets, they sit right in there. They're nice and close to these towers rests nice in here. I think this is a winning combination right here. Let's get some of these printed out and then let's test it. Hey David, oh, thanks for Whoa. waiting. I'm sorry it took so long. How do these look? They look really good. I printed four of them. Oh, you know what? Before we get started, let me tell you about these. Yeah, that'd be great. This is Strong Hero 3D and this was printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III. Five perimeters, five top layers, five bottom layers, 20% infill with a cubic infill type. It's strong and it's awesome. I like Strong Hero 3D filaments and I think they print really well. My Prusa i3 Mark III isn't specifically tuned for this material, so you can see some layer artifacts. It is strong as it is printed, but when you shine a light in the right direction, you do see the layers. With this model, strength means more than appearance. And while this does look okay, this will be phenomenally strong. This is Tallman Nylon 230, printed on the Prusa i3 Mark II 3D printer with a Gecotech flexible build sheet. Five perimeters, five top layers, five bottom layers, 20% infill, cubic infill type. Tallman makes wonderful materials and Nylon 230 
is just one of them. It's a wonderful material, its strength is nearly unmatched, and the pieces it produces are nearly indestructible. I could throw this towards the sun, and it would hit the sun, and the sun would go out. This is filamentum PLA crystal clear printed on the Railcore 2 3D printer. Five perimeters, five top layers, five bottom layers, 20% infill, gyroid infill type. Filamentum has full control of the amazing palette of colors available to print with, and this PLA crystal clear is no exception. Saying it's crystal clear and then seeing it as green does lead me to wonder how they came up with the name, but with the amount of perimeters, top layers, bottom layers, and infill, this is a strong piece and it looks really cool. This is MVO Engineering carb-loaded PET printed on the Ultimaker 2 Plus with a ruby nozzle and magic goo and PVA glue on the bed. Five perimeters, five top layers, five bottom layers, 20% infill of a cubic infill type. MVO Engineering's carb-loaded PET proves without a shadow of a doubt that the engineers at that company are well-skilled in the art of magic and voodoo. This print almost looks injection molded from the side and you have a really hard time distinguishing the layers. This was printed at 0.2 millimeter layers, but when you look at the side, it just looks like a gorgeous piece. Well done, MVO Engineering. Now that you've heard about them, which one do you want to test? That one. The green one. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and remove your scooter. Bring it forth to here, and I will hold it down. Ooh. Ooh, that one's really nice. That's not bad at all. No. The scooter doesn't seem to lean too much. No. This will be attached to a board. Okay. With... Yeah. This is great. Go ahead and remove your scooter for me. So it looks like we've got four of these to put together on a board, but we need to first cut ourselves a board to use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, David, I think it's time we get to work. Yeah. Come on. We don't know where the safety goggles are for David, so he's going in the house to get some because remember kids, safety first. Those are for people that wear glasses. These are for none. These should fit over my glasses. Ah, see, look. Perfect. Perfect. High five. Ha ha! Yeah! Hold it, be proud. That is our board. That is our board to put our little scooter stands in. Let's clean up and then let's screw it in, okay? Okay. Hey David, we got the board cut. Thanks for the help on that. Good job, good job Thank being you. safe. Thank you. Now it's time to put the scooter stands on the board. I do have some appropriately sized screws cool. and I think we should stagger it because the handles on scooters kind of stick out, right? Yeah. You don't want them bonking into each other too much. And they might get in the way of each other. Exactly. So I think staggering is a good idea. And we're going to start up there in the corner. Which color do you want to start with? I think we, um, I think I want to start with black. Grab it. Right there? Yeah. And put the first one in. Push. Pretty good. Oh, look at that, it's sturdy as well. Do you want to test it with a scooter now or do you want to get them all on first? I want to test it. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'll hold this. Go grab a scooter, let's see what happens. I have got the scooter. Hey, it looks like it works. <laughs> it looks like it works. It works really well. Yeah. Well, let's get the other ones in. Stop. 
We've done it, David. We got it. We got it. Bring scooter number one, please. Yeah. Excellent. David, please bring scooter number two. Okay, okay. So, so far, so good. David, please bring scooter number three. Hey! Wow. And we don't have a fourth scooter yet. No. Nope, no yet. fourth scooter. But, but we did it. Look at this, David. The handlebars aren't hitting. Um, okay, so some of these scooters have really wide handlebars, don't yeah, they? Yeah, especially this one. Okay, so... Maybe we have to do a different way of staggering, maybe a larger board, but the scooter stands all worked well, didn't they? Yeah. And you know what's cool? We showed everyone how to make their own. Yeah. But just in case someone didn't want to take the time to make their own, there'll be a link in the description where they can buy this model and the Autodesk Fusion 360 files so they can kind of learn along with us as we go. Okay. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. <gasps> Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it if you made it this far. Thanks again, David, for the help. Bam. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like this, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions, leave a comment. But don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five. We did it! Yay! We did it! Yay!